when we talk about dilations of lines, there's two key concepts that you have to know. The first one is saying that dilated lines are the same line if the center is on the original line. So what that means is if you look at this picture, if the center of dilation is on this original line AB, when I go and do the dilation, let's say it was a dilation of a scale factor of 2, if you notice the distance from OB, it gets doubled to get to B prime, and then same thing for A to A and A prime. But since the center is on the line, when you move, you're moving on that same line for the new distances, which means A prime, A, B, and B prime are all on the same line. They're all collinear to each other. Since lines go on forever, it would extend past A and B onto A prime and B prime. If this were a segment, then that wouldn't be the case. It, this, the new segment A prime, B prime would be double. But since it's a line, they go on forever. So this, if the center of dilation is on the line, that means that you really end up with the same line after you do a dilation, since lines go on forever. Concept number two is whenever you have the center of dilation not on the line, so if you look at this example, then here's your pre-image. The image will always be parallel. It will always be a line parallel to the original line um, because when you dilate, you're going to move along this line. So you're going to take that distance and then whatever the scale factor to get to the new one, um, you'll end up with a new line that's parallel because we have really these corresponding angles that are congruent, which is why it works. But you just need to know that the new lines are going to be parallel, which means they have the same slope, but they'll have different y-intercepts. Um, and it will not be the same line. You'll get two different lines that are parallel to each other whenever the center is not on the line, not on the original line. So if we look at the examples, the first one, you're given this line y equals 2x minus 4. So I'm going to start with that. So the y-intercept is negative 4, so I'm going to start down at negative 4. And then the slope is 2, so that means I'm going to go up 2 and write 1 since it's positive. So up 2, write 1, and I'm just graphing this line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dilate that using the, giving, the given um, scale factor. So here's this line. This is y equals 2x minus 4. Um, we're given the scale factor of 3 halves, and our center is at the origin. So the center of um, dilation here is at the origin, which is 0, comma 0. So I'm going to go ahead and label that, and I'm going to put a C there for center. So then just like when we do any other um, situations here with dilations, any other problems, we always start with the center and we go to each of the points and then we multiply the distance that we need to that we traveled by the scale factor to figure out the distance we need to travel. Um, keep in mind though with lines, according to what we just talked about above, whenever you have a line that has a center of dilation not on the original line, we know that we're going to get out a new line that's going to be parallel to the original. So we know that the dilated line will be parallel to the original line. Dilated line will be parallel to original line. So that means the slope of this new line is going to be the same slope. It'll be 2 as well. So if I want to write the equation of this new line, I have to know the slope and I have to know the y-intercept. So basically, here's where the dilation part comes in. So we're going to go from the center, we're going to go to a point. So your best bet is just to go to the y-intercept because if your center is at the origin, you'll get the new y-intercept in just one step versus having to do a couple different steps. So first thing you want to do is you want to count this original distance. So the original distance is 4, so you had to go down 4. And then if you remember, we always multiply that distance by the scale factor. So since it's down 4, we're going to multiply that by the scale factor of 3 over 2, which means you're going to be going down, and then so 4 times 3 over 2, well, 4 divided by 2 will be 2, 2 times 3 gives me 6. So that means I'll be going down 6. So 5 and 6. So the new distance is down 6.
So here's the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is negative 6. And if I were to graph this line, well, remember we're using the same slope, so it would be up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. We should end up with a line that's parallel to this original line. So my new line is this line right here, parallel to the original. And I'm going to label it y equals, so it's going to be 2x minus 6. So the equation is what it asks for. y equals 2x minus 6. So let's look at a couple other examples where the dilation is a little bit different or the center of dilation is a little bit different. Um, so this example number 2 now we're given this line y equals 2x, so that means if I were to graph this, the y-intercept is 0 because it's just like a plus 0 at the end. This is really like y equals 2x plus 0. So I'm starting at 0. The slope's going to be 2 over 1, so again, up 2 over 1, up 2, right 1. Always go to the right when you're counting, so if it's positive, you're going up, and then if it's negative, you're going down. And then I'm going to connect this. So y equals 2x. I'm going to identify the center. So the center is at the origin again, so at 0, 0. So here's the center. And then the scale factor for the dilation is 4. So basically, since we have the center, if you remember the concepts on the previous page, since the center of dilation is on the line, that means the dilated line is just going to be the original line. So the dilated line is y equals 2x because the center of dilation is on the original line. And here's why that works. Um, so here's the equation right here, but the reason why this works is if you kind of follow what we did in the last example, if I start at the center, figure out how do you go from the center to one of the points on the line, well I had to go up 2 over 1, so if I go up 2 and then over 1, well the scale factor is 4, so multiply that now by 4, that means you're going up 8, so 2, 4, 6, Two, four, six, eight, and then over four. So if you go up eight over four, you end up with this point right here, which when you connect where you started and this point, you end up with the exact same thing. Or if you start at this point and you use the slope of two, which is what you're supposed to do, up two over one, and then go backwards, you end up with a y-intercept of zero, zero, and you end up with the exact same line. So that's why in this case you end up with the same line um, because the center of the original line was on the line. So then the next example here, we start with our line y equals 2x plus 1. So you're starting at 1 and your, your slope is the same here, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And then you go backwards. Go ahead and connect these. So this is y equals 2x plus 1. Find the center. The scale factor is going to be 2. The center is negative 1, comma 3. So negative 1, comma 1, 2, 3 is the center. So just like all the other examples, you have to take and go from the center to any point on this line. I usually just go to the y-intercepts to be consistent, but really you could pick any point you want. So that means I have to go down 2 over 1. If the scale factor is 2, that means I'm going to double that. So down 2 over 1 really becomes down 4 over 2. Or you could think of it as down 2 over 1 and then just repeat that like we did in the um, with the other dilations. So this point, 1 comma negative 1, has to be a point on the new line. Um, and we know that our dilated line 
So the dilated line will be parallel because the center is not on the original line. So dilated line is parallel to original. So that's using the concepts. So that means the slope of the dilated line is going to be the same. It's going to have the same slope as the original, which will be 2. And we know that the point on one of the points on the original line is going to, or on the new line, is going to be 1, negative 1. So then the question becomes, well, how do you get the equation of this new line? Well, the new line has to have a slope of 2, and it has to pass through this point. So you could plug x, y into y equals mx plus b and plug the slope in and solve for b. Or you could just count it on the graph. So if I'm at 1, negative 1, if I start here and I count a slope of 2, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and I'm going to go backwards so that I can get the y-intercept, um, I could solve it that way. So the y-intercept is right here. So it's 1, 2, 3. So it has a y-intercept of negative 3. So if I graph this, I'm just going to go ahead and connect these. So here's my line. And then we just have to write the equation. So this line has a slope of 2, and it goes through the y-axis at negative 3. So the equation is going to be y equals 2x minus 3. So remember, there's two scenarios here. There's always going to be, if the center of dilation is not on the original line, your line will always be parallel. And then you just have to figure out the y-intercept. Or if the center of dilation is on the original line, then you don't really have to do anything because the dilated line is just going to be that original line. So we have just a couple of multiple choice questions here to look at. So number four, given line M and point O not on line M. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this. So we have line M and we have point O not on line M. It says the image of line M is constructed through a dilation centered at O with a scale factor of 3. So that means if there's this new um, line and it has a scale factor of 3 with the center being at O, so basically this distance here has to get 3 times as many. So that would be like double the distance. So 3 times means that new line would have to go through here. So it's 3 times away from point O. And it would have to be parallel to that original line. So it should look parallel to this line here. So which question best answers it? Well, number three, a line parallel to line M. Whenever you have a center of dilation not on the original line, your two lines are going to be parallel. The next example here says line AB is dilated with a center of dilation at A. So if we have line AB, that's going to look like this. but the center of dilation is on the line. It's at point A. So that means if you dilate a line where the center is on the line, you're going to end up with the same line. So the slope will always be the same because it's going to be the exact same line. So the slope will be the same, but really the line will be the exact same line. The dilated line is the same line because the center was at was on the original line. Last example here, a line is to be dilated. The center of dilation does not lie on the line. So something like this. So if the center of dilation does not lie on the line, the scale factor is one half. All that means is this distance will now be half as far. So the new line will be half as far from the center instead of the original distance. But the lines will always be parallel, so the answer is going to be choice two. So there's the two concepts. If the center is not on the line, you end up with parallel lines. If the center is on the line, you end up with the same line. Just keep in mind where the center is located, if it's at the origin versus some other point. But you always just go and you find the distance from the center to a point on the line. doesn't really matter if the center is on the origin or not. And then you're going to do whatever the scale factor is to that distance to come up with a new point. And then once you get that new point, you might have to um, backtrack to be able to find the y-intercept. Or sometimes you might just get the y-intercept if the center was at the origin.